unfortunately, I'm going second. <laughs> so I get to use the word of the day. <laughs> First. Um, so tonight, I would like to speak. Um, well, it's interesting how you start thinking about your life and your identity, and what would you tell you know a group of people in you know an icebreaker type speech like this and. I went through a big process of trying to figure out what, what would I try to share with you, and I came up with this like long list of things that I would love to share. Um, and then I tried like doing a practice run, and I found that <laughs> that there's no way that I'm going to get through half of that. So um, this weekend, I'm actually heading off to um, I'm going down to D.C. Um, leaving on Saturday for the march on Washington, which is a big national um, gay rights march um, on the on the capital that starts, that starts at the capitol um, um, and i'm sure many of you are familiar with you know issues around you know equality and marriage and, and um, whatnot so it's gonna be a great event but i wanted to since i'm going down to the march in washington meetings tomorrow i thought i would focus my time with you this evening um, about my own personal story as a gay man um, so I think the place that I wanted to start was, um, was well, I, I really the place I want to focus on this evening is, is, the, is this the process of coming out as a gay person. Um, I, I have to admit that I, I think I had a sort of lonely childhood in some respects. Um, in large part because I knew that I was different from my classmates. And it was confusing because <coughs> when I was in probably an elemental, in elementary school or middle school, and I would go into the locker room, I would just notice I would have this extraordinary respect for some of my classmates. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, but it's also kind of freaky because you're like, what is this natural? What what's going on here? Um, and you go, you work yourself into this this his, this pattern of denial. What is? I'm having certain feelings. I don't know what they are. You know, oh, it just must be that I just would really like to be friends with this person. Um, and men are speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so that sort of um, so as I went along, I followed a, a fairly you know typical pattern of um, my my dad got me involved in the Boy Scouts, which was a great experience, um, but certainly didn't expose me to I guess the some of the experiences that I would have liked to have you know in terms of self-validating my own um, sexuality or, or emerging sense of identity. Um, but I did get involved in music in a big way during, um, during my childhood. And I actually ended up going to music camp for um, three summers during my uh, middle school and early high school. Um, it was this great camp in Maine called New England Music Camp. Um, I was I was playing piano, and I also because you couldn't just play piano; you had to be part of an ensemble. I was um, involved with um, like the orchestra, and I played you know percussion in the orchestra. But the but NEMC was I guess where I came out to myself as being gay. But I should say that it wasn't. Of an entirely smooth process. I. What happened was my second summer there, I started to date this um, this great girl. Um, you know, we when we were first getting to know each other, we were playing like you know truth or not truth or dare, but like you know that game where you share a secret about yourself and the other person shares a secret and you go back and forth. And she she shares. Um, you know, I think I'm bisexual. And I'm like, hmm, 
think I'm bisexual too. <laughs> but, um, but unfortunately, our relationship was not meant to be. Um, every time we would um, start to uh, kiss, I would break out laughing. <laughs> Unfortunately for her self-esteem, <laughs> I have to admit that actually she's a lesbian now, so uh, <laughs> I take credit for that one. Um, uh, um, but anyway, one of those nights of stress, she came to, she um, she got really pissed off at me and actually told everyone, shouted out at some campfire, Rick Stanford is gay, and that. That just totally devastated me. I mean, that night I cried myself to sleep, and because I thought that being gay meant that I would have to move to the to the village and get AIDS and die a lonely person. So, because um, that's the messages that I was receiving as a as a child. Um, anyway, so. The summer, the, the third summer that I went to camp, I came home early after only one month of camp, and I wrote a letter to my sister, because at this point I had come to accept that I was gay. And I wrote a letter, letter to my sister, um, who was off and abroad for the summer, um, basically coming out to her in that letter. And it was, um, it felt really good to be able to tell, to some, finally to someone in my own family, um, and we have a really close relationship. She came home um, from her trip. She was biking across the country. Um, and somehow, I, I just learned this very recently, but um, see, I'm getting the red light, that she left the letter that I had written to her on the coffee table in my house. And God knows why. <laughs> I guess the, the biggest thing I wanted to share with you is that I, I'm so lucky to have an incredibly an unconditionally supportive family because what happened was is that my parents found a letter. They didn't tell me for like several months. My mom, in the meantime, she read, she went to the library and read a book. What does it mean? What's it like to grow up as a gay, gay person? She read the book so, she, so, so, so that she could come to me and the very first words out of her mouth were, um, Rick, I want you to know that regardless of what life you live, that we love you. So it's with that that I, I, I go tomorrow, or I guess it's yeah, tomorrow to the March of Washington. <laughs>